Hey YouTube, so I decided to make a video today demonstrating how to color fill a handgun using nail polish. I've seen a lot of videos online of people using acrylic based paint pens and even crayons. Uh, the only problem with the paint pens that I found was uh, I've tried to use them, but they require really harsh chemicals in order to remove the paint properly. And I'm worried about using really, really harsh stuff on my guns because it might affect the bluing or uh, the finish. So I found this method using non-acetone nail polish remover and regular old nail polish. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So the things you're going to need for this are standard nail polish, cotton swabs, shop towels, the blue kind of have very little lint, and non-acetone nail polish remover. And of course, you can't forget your gun. My gun that I'm color filling today is a Springfield Armory XD45. Safety check it first before you do any modifications or any kind of work on your gun so you don't shoot a hole somewhere with a negligent discharge. First step is to disassemble the gun, uh, remove the slide. I like to break it down into pieces. That way, uh, if I do spill paint or if I do spill the polish remover, I'm not damaging the polymer grip or any other area of the gun, like the internals. Remove the spring, remove the barrel, and we're pretty much ready to start working on it. So I decided to start off with the Springfield Armory logo on top of my gun. Uh, it has the smallest etchings, so it's a little trickier to get into, so I figured if this was not going to work, it wouldn't work on this. So the first step that I use is to degrease the gun, removing any oils, grease, um, and also it's very important to use the non-acetone. I've read places that uh, acetone can affect the finish of a gun, just like the uh, mineral spirits and paint thinner. So non-acetone is pretty safe. Uh, if people can use it on their hands, I'm sure it'll be okay on metal. So clean the area thoroughly, dry it off. You can uh, let it air dry. Acetone evaporates pretty quick, but I opted to kind of dry it off with a q-tip and a rag. And then you just, once it's dry and the acetone's gone, just start painting it in. I went ahead and sped up the painting process because it's pretty simple. You just dab the paint, make sure you get the paint into the uh, etchings and spread it nice and evenly across it. Um, I added a lot extra just because I've never been able to do things um, without putting a lot of extra things on it. And then while you wet, let the paint dry, have some coffee. Alright, now that the paint is thoroughly dried, uh, I'm going to pour a little bit of the acetone or the non-acetone nail polish into the lid. Um, this way I'm not dipping dirty q-tips into the actual acetone and I have a little place to, to work from. It's easy to access. Just moving all my supplies closer. Alright, now it's pretty simple. Just dip it in, and again I sped up the footage, and just gently brush over the painted area, using the weight of the Q-tip with maybe a little bit of extra weight from your finger, but you're not pushing very hard. You don't want the, the nail polish remover to actually get into the etchings and lift up the paint from inside. So you're basically just scraping it off the top, leaving the paint inside the etchings. It does take a little bit of time. Um, I believe this footage is at 300% normal speed. So it took me about maybe a minute, two minutes to get all the, uh, the paint off to the point where I liked it. But it's not that hard. Just gently brush over it, use a bunch of Q-tips. Once the Q-tip has paint on it, switch it out for another one. Repeat, 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 and then dry the area. Uh, with a lint-free uh, rag or the clean end of the Q-tip. And see, this is the, the finished effect. You'll notice a little bit of paint uh, still smudged on the slide, but uh, just going over that a couple times with a shop rag with a little bit of the nail polish remover on it will clean up the excess stuff pretty easily. And that looks pretty good. Alright, second step, or second part of the gun, I'm going to do the side where it says Springfield Armory and uh, the serial number and the XD model number. <coughs> Again, I don't need to talk you through this. Same process. Clean it first, add the paint, let the paint dry, wipe it off. So 
Same thing, very light pressure with the Q-tip. There's an alternate method I use uh, in this part where I use a shop rag, and it's much more effective for long, flat surfaces. Uh, you just basically damp one side of the shop rag and just gently brush over the area with uh, the rag and the uh, nail polish remover. It works faster, and then you just use the Q-tips to clean up the excess paint. And because the shop rag is flat, it has a harder time getting into the etchings. Unlike the Q-tip where it's rounded, it could actually possibly get down there and lift some of the paint off. So there you go. That's the second side. This whole video from start to finish when I was making it probably took 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. That's only because I was filming it, doing zooming ins and, you know, trying to make it look fancier than it should be, I guess. Uh, and of course, I'd let the paint dry forever. Um, if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe and like and share. Uh, I feel like I do a decent job making videos that make things easy. And so now I'm on the final side, and a little close-up shot of the shop rag and how it can kind of quickly peel away the paint. I didn't let that paint dry too long. I probably should let it dry a little bit more, but the effect at the end is, is still the same. It looks really good. But you can see how quickly the shop rag just evenly gets rid of the paint. And there you go. Completed. All three sides. Over the next week or so, I'll be uh, doing a paint job of my AR, and I'll post that video too. If you like what you saw, I have another video where I convert a 30-round PMAG into a California Legal 10-round PMAG using rivets. Let me know what you think, questions and comments below, and see you next time.